G'day everyone, I'm Smokescreen and welcome back to another video and here we go with some daily race C action this time around and this was kind of a spontaneous session to be honest because I jumped on for FIA exhibition series uh, thinking that the uh, start time was 4 o'clock in the afternoon like it was at the previous season it's actually 6 o'clock so I jumped on with about 5 hours <laughs> until FIA and I can tell you what, the combination for FIA was not interesting nor difficult enough to warrant 5 hours practice uh, so I jumped into daily race C with no practice at all. So we're starting from the back of the grid with no qualifying time. We're starting 13th this time. The Audi TT gets a shocking start. I get a decent start off the line with false start check. A little bit of traction control in this car here. Heading up towards turn one here at Willow Springs. we on the inside of the Audi TT there. Make sure we give him space on the exit. But he still remains side by side coming in towards turn two here. He just slots in ahead. We're going to go for that later faster apex there. You see we just wash a little bit wide halfway through turn two which uh, means that any moves on the exit are not going to be possible as we head up towards turn three. Audi TT thinks about braking early but just comes out of the throttle. We've got two identical Nissans up ahead as well. Another TT ahead and there is a Lamborghini ahead of the group as well that gets shepherded off the track. It comes back on, big puff of uh, dust as we head through turn five. Massive punt on the Nissan by the Lamborghini and they end up off circuit. Does the Lamborghini get a penalty for that one? It appears to be not. Uh, to be, appears to be not the case, so penalty system once again working absolute wonders here as the Audi TT goes on the inside of the Lamborghini here. We're going to follow that TT through as the Lamborghini's up on the inside, on the outside rather, and the uh, Audi TT just completely sweeps in ahead of me in quite a fair little move there, but he gets a poor run having to come out and throttle on the exit, and we are going to be side by side heading down the main straight up into seventh position at this point here. That Audi TT should come into its own down the straight, but we managed to keep that position uh, heading into turn one there. So very interesting start here. You see not quite quite a, quite large gaps between myself and uh, sixth position, and then another large gap between sixth and fifth. So hopefully we can just keep it clean from here on. Right. So the car we have chosen is the Aston Martin V8 Vantage. If you couldn't guess that already. Uh, if you were not, if you're not familiar with how this car looks in in a uh, roof cam or hood cam, uh, as it is in this car here, and of course, yes, daily race C. So we're at 15 laps here. There is a little bit of strategy involved. Two tyres are available: racing hard and racing medium. But the racing hard tyres are the mandatory tyre. So you can either do a you can do a no stop if you like, but the tyres are going to be absolutely shocking by the end of the race. So that's not the favoured strategy. So you can. The, the other strategy is a one-stop, of course. You can do a two-stop, but that is not ideal. So with the one-stop uh, strategy, you're going to be spending some time on the hard tyres, then pitting about halfway through the race and going onto the medium tyres. I think we decide to pit on the end of lap seven, if I recall correctly. A couple of people have driven off the track on the end of lap three, uh, and does that same thing happen here? Uh, on lap 5. Uh, it does, but it turns out to actually be us. We completely bin it off the track on the end, on the outside of turn 9. Uh, come back on the track, and actually there's a little bit of contact when I rejoin on the track with the Audi up ahead. Uh, thankfully no penalties for that, but we lose positions all the way down to 11th. We slot in behind the Lamborghini that had a tough start on this race here. So hopefully we can just focus on making some positions back up here. But at the end of the day, uh, falling, you know, binning yourself uh, not ideal no matter what happens really because obviously you're always going to finish in a better position than you were going to if you didn't bin it. Interesting, right, so we're up behind the Lamborghini here coming through turn two of lap six who is in turn in the slipstream of the Jaguar up ahead. Someone's on the dust in the sand on the exit of turn two but everyone stays in position here, turn three, very late apex. So we're going to try and power up the hill nice and slowly. Lamborghini very wide as we head through turn four, and that just leaves him susceptible to a move by me as we head through Budweiser balcony. And heading towards turn five, side-by-side -side contact between the Audi and the Jaguar up ahead, but we're just hemmed in behind that Audi a little bit. We're not quite able to capitalise and try and get past the Audi as they get a poor run through turn five. But as we head down the straight, you can see that Audi is beginning to pull away 
front wheel, uh, front engine, front wheel drive FF cars, very strong in a straight line as we're on the inside, heading through turn eight, and then we're heading into turn nine now, on the inside, Audi TT on the outside, and we just sneak up the inside of the Jag, you want to try and give him some space in the exit, there was a little bit of contact, but there was about half the track of space there, but I think that Jaguar ended up going into the pits anyway, so there was a slight bit of contact there, but I felt as though there was just enough room for him to try and keep his car on circuit. We managed to make our way up into 8th position, the car does a little wobble on the entry to turn 1, we just have to counter steer slightly and get a poor run, which means we have to look behind, and I think that was a Renault McGann trophy uh, behind us there, so hopefully we can just get a nice uh, clean run and not worry about a move too much, no, it was actually the uh, Lamborghini, my apologies heading through turn two here so this is lap seven about halfway through the race at this point we have uh, had a quite you know quite a long period of no action which was the large portion I skipped before lap five but we are now heading into the pit stop phases so a couple of people went into their uh, pits on the end of the previous lap lap six and we're going to head into our pit stop on the end of lap seven here so as far as the rest of the race goes we've got a couple of people we know GT Rebecca and Phasma up in one two I'm awesome we've raced him before and then as far as I can tell uh, that is all the people I recognize that are currently on that leaderboard there but as we head through the final turn we're not going to fall victim to our previous mistake obviously we were just a bit too narrow on the braking zone for turn nine which is why we went off we ended up going off again actually as we head on the exit of turn nine but thankfully we are going into the pits no penalties on to medium tires plenty of fuel to get to the end you've got about 25 laps worth of fuel for this race uh, which is obviously more than 15 uh, in case we didn't complete preschool mathematics but you see all the people that went into the pits on the previous lap have overtaken us they've got that undercut on us thanks to a faster cleaner lap on their brand new tires compared to myself on very worn hard tires which were leading to a lot of understeer but it's at this point here where the tables turn a little bit of contact I think with the Lamborghini it appeared there was but I didn't think there was when I when I drove it but we we managed to make our way up the inside of the Lamborghini and we're gonna go up the inside of the Jaguar but we've still got him up the inside as we head around through turn four we're gonna take a nice wide line just give him plenty of room on that apex there if he's not quite able to get that car into the gap and we managed to make that position up into 10th place very close to this Nissan up ahead he goes very deep here which means he's gonna go uh, wide he's gonna apex too early for turn six Munro Ridge there and he's gonna end up wide but he manages to keep it on the track there which is very lucky for him at this point here so hopefully we can try and get this move but he just shuts the door there he is privy to that move going on the very inside of turn eight can lead yourself to an overtake uh, heading through turn eight there as well we just lunge up the inside a little bit there was a bit of contact between the pair of us and he did end up off the track <laughs> So yeah, probably my fault that one, to be honest, you know, I'm gonna, gonna hold my hand up for that, looking back upon it, probably should have waited up for him and given the position back, but, uh, well, <laughs> yeah, there's no real buts, is there, unfortunately, anyway, um, another car bins it on the ex exit of turn one, make our way up into eighth position, we've got a McGann Trophy in seventh position here, that car is very poor in a straight line, so uh, the Aston Martin is not that good in a straight line, but better than the McGann Trophy, so hopefully that combined with Slipstream can mean we can get a fairly uh, clean outright overtake with minimal time loss on this McGann Trophy here, heading down the hill towards turn five. We've got the uh, Jaguar of Nanosaur 221, fairly close behind here we're gonna have to be careful so we're on the defense and the offense trying to overtake this McGann trophy but all the while trying not to allow that Jaguar to try and get an overlap on myself but you see we're side by side heading through turn seven in towards the sweeper the final couple of corners here and you're down on the radar the Jaguar follows me through so it just goes to show just how poor that McGann trophy is in a straight line having lost two positions there uh, going into turn eight and then we're heading on to the main straight here of the of, of lap nine uh, you see he's got the overlap heading into turn one we're on the inside however so uh, we've got to be able to remain side by side through turn one he almost gets completely ahead there laid on the brakes try and meet that apex beautifully and we have managed to defend our position there which is not a bad uh, not a bad effort by us here we've got a 3.2 second gap to the guy in six that present stage so uh, and 20 second gap to the leaders 
So I think it's this point here where I kind of decide I'm going to, you know, we're going to have a good race here with this Jaguar. I'm not going to try and worry about getting up the field uh, too much more. We do have door number five on our car, you can see on the bonnet. So hopefully a couple of people up ahead uh, bin it and we're able to get the positions up that way. But as far as outright pace goes, we're probably not going to be able to catch any further cars. Although in saying that, the last few corners, the gap between myself and Lucas Alexander up ahead has gone down to 2.5 seconds. Uh, was 3.2 earlier in the lap so he perhaps is still on worn tyres or is um, just not on the pace quite frankly but as we head into the final corner again or second to last corner technically we've got the Jaguar behind this time looking up the inside as we head into turn 9 late on the brakes roll off the brake pedal as best as you possibly can but he is still on the inside we're going to have to give him that space on the apex there but he just gets caught on the kerb a little bit and gets a poor run through there so it's very wide way back in the distance so that should hopefully uh, help keep the Jaguar free from pressure uh, as we try and have a good race here. Up ahead it is a Toyota GT86 just grazes the gravel on the exit of turn one there so yes uh, in saying that hopefully some people bin it this guy nearly does. It looks like at this stage we're going to try and get a move done on this lap. We were very wide through turn two but that means we get a nice fast exit. You see just the, how fast we were closing down on the Toyota 86 as we head up towards turn three. He runs and has a, quite an early apex. We're able to get the overlap going through turn three. Rounding outside for turn four. Keep it up high and wide. Still on the outside of the Toyota 86 at this point. We're heading down the hill side by side. Heading into turn five. We've got the inside for turn five which is the favoured uh, track position at that point there and I was well ahead at that point as the Toyota 86 if you were just looking at that radar at the precise moment of overtaking there he did get a little bit of oversteer heading down the hill towards turn five there so we have both got the move up there myself and the Jaguar the Jaguar following me through after forcing the error on the Toyota 86 there but we're going to keep him to the outside for the final turn now very dangerous sort of place to position the car as it led myself to going completely out into the into the into the infinite abyss of sand that is surrounding Willow Springs here on lap 5. But you see, starting lap 12 now, similar story to the previous lap, he's looking around the outside, not the place to be for lap 1, so as long as we can defend correctly, hopefully he won't be able to make a way past there. That Jaguar F-Type that he's driving is better in a straight line uh, compared to the Aston Martin, uh, I think, so we're going to have to be wary of that fact in order to try and not fall victim. 20 moves there. So as he head up towards turn 3 for the 12th time, he's very close uh, behind me here and we're going to have to try and keep it narrow for turn 4 but he's looking around the outside that time he just clipped that sand on the inside of the turn there, very close behind. We're going to have to be careful heading up towards the final corner. We're going to have to strategically place our car in order not to allow him to get that overlap down the inside of the final corner but you see we make a mistake heading through turn 5 and I think uh, we ended up breaking a little bit too late and I think the guy follows uh, suit as well and he just falls to three tenths behind which is not close enough for a move into turn eight. Yellow flag up ahead does somebody bend it off the track and his fifth position is slow as we head through the final corner here we've got the Jaguar up the inside as well a little bit of contact just in the apex I am awesome there uh, heading into the pit lane I didn't realize until last second and almost drove into the sand uh, but we managed to get up into fifth position, so that's not a bad return here. We're in the position that the game predicts we should finish in based on our DR uh, level in the lobby. So as long as we can keep this position from the Jaguar here, it's going to be a fairly uh, good result, uh, all things considered. So if you remember at the start of the race, we did start 13th. Uh, we did start, yes, yeah, I think it was 13th out of 15th or something uh, we started, which isn't you know isn't great we were the highest starter of the people that hadn't set a lap time thanks to having a nice high DR at this point we're at about 48,000 DR at this point which isn't bad very close to A plus driver rating which is kind of where I really want to sit ultimately is A plus comfortably in A plus is really all is really my goal as well so you know I'm quite happy that we're fairly close to that as well. As we graze the gravel heading through turn 6 there, you see the Jaguar is just closing ever so quickly as we head in towards the final corner. He almost gets that overlap to the inside, but the 
track just moves uh, left slightly, just in time, in order for that Jaguar to not stick his nose up the inside there. So we're going to try and get a nice fast run through the final turn now, thanks to the Jaguar. Just dropping off the back of my car a little bit as we just graze the gravel, heading onto the main straight there. The Jaguar is going to have my slipstream as we head down the straight. We're trying to decide, do I go defensive or take the racing line? I think at this point here we take the racing line as he's about one and a half tenths back, which is quite a lunge for a fast flowing corner like turn one where you only drop uh, a couple of gears. Uh, four. And then heading up towards turn two, he's now half a second behind, so he's dropped off through turn one thanks to us taking that racing line. He obviously may have gone slightly deep thanks to being in the slipstream, but you see just we wash a little bit wide halfway through turn two there, so that's we can see the tie wear beginning to take effect here, actually down on the tie wear graphic on the bottom left of your screen, my front left tyre is heading towards 30% tyre wear, which is quite significant. Around a track like this, we've got very fast sweepers, especially uh, the right-handers of turn two, uh, eight and nine. Even this corner here over a crest, you do want grip, so you don't end up wide on that gravel on the exit. But if we head up through Munro Ridge and Wings Leg now, which is turn seven, we're heading into turn eight. So we're gonna take that nice line this time, start out wide and then take a line of, of uh, lesser resistance ideally seeing as we're not defending and then into the final corner keep our eye down on that radar there's any cars going to start to poke into the bottom of the screen we've actually got gt rebecca in for a pit stop so running very long on medium tires 14 laps uh, she did run on us I, I assume it's a she uh, but seeing the name is rebecca but as we head on the pit exit uh, GT Rebecca stays ahead so ultimately fifth is probably the best we're going to get in this race we've run a little bit wide through turn one pushing the limits now almost grazes the gravel on the entry to turn two as well just as long as we keep it relatively to the center of the road halfway through turn two and then try and get on the power as the car tends towards the apex at the end of the corner hopefully this Jaguar can remain at about a similar uh, distance behind as we don't want to end up losing a position on the final lap after all this fighting all this defending it sure would be a shame to lose the position on the final lap so we're going to have to be careful here but he's now two tenths behind as we head through turn four try and get the power down down the hill heading through turn five take that cutting uh, entry line on the on the sand there to get a better angle up through this corner which means we get a smoother run over the crest here he's very close behind two tenths behind as we head uh, along the back straight heading into turn eight you see we just have to run defensive on the right hand side of the circuit at this particular point here you see we're very close to that apex just grazing the gravel on the inside as well heading towards the final corner breaking just on the 150 meter board we are a slight bit too narrow for my liking but as long as we can sort of keep momentum up but on the exit we just get an oversteer moment there and as we look behind you see how close that Jaguar is coming up the, the line can we get to the line ahead in fifth place and he just overtakes us at last second there and beats us by about one hundredth of a second or nine thousandths of a second technically is the official finishing time there so what a race between the pair of us I had quite a good time defending and he was on the attack very fair clean battle and congratulations to him for overtaking us as disappointing as it is to lose a position on the final straight uh, it it was down to us making that sort of little bit of a mistake that little bit of oversteer we got exiting the final corner of the final lap just led to us losing that position but at the end of the day, we went up seven positions, which is fairly good for a daily race. Uh, C, especially at Willow Springs, we did even bin it once as well. So uh, you can only imagine the kind of positions we may have gotten if we decided uh, binning it wasn't a good idea. Evidently, that is what I decided on that five, but yeah. <laughs> anyway, hope you enjoyed. Uh, thank you for making it to the end. Do leave a comment as well. Uh, questions, comments, and constructive criticism all very much appreciated. Do leave a like if you liked it, and do subscribe if you'd like to see more videos from me. But that's going to be the end of this one today, and that means that is it from me. So once again, I do thank you very much for watching. See you later.